last week when we ended the compass video, I said that this week we would be talking about a compass's best friend. Just like a boy deserves a good dog, I believe a compass deserves a good pair of binoculars. In this video, I'm going to go over the three types of binoculars that I have. I'm also going to be allowing you to see through them so you can get a better feel for them. Later, we'll be doing uh, some more exercises at the park we went to uh, last week. We'll be uh, traveling via compass and binocular. And we'll also be doing another experiment where we're going to be traveling map and binocular. And you'll kind of see how to work both of those together. After that, we'll do another uh, wrap-up. And again, with wrap-up, we'll be stowing one of these binoculars into our backpack, building out our backpack better like I explained last week. Before we get into the binoculars, I want to give you a little quiz. I want to show you the binocular. I'm going to tell you the numbers on it. And you tell me which one's the best. All right, first, 1025s. Second, 1632s. And last, my 840s. Okay. Now, don't cheat, but you can comment below whether or not you get the answer right. Which was the best? If you don't know what these numbers mean, you're more likely going to go with the 840s. The bigger set of binoculars mostly because of their size when in fact the most powerful binoculars I have are the 16 uh, the 1632s so now let me explain the number so you can understand what I'm talking about 16 refers to the magnification of the object that I'm viewing uh, 8 being half as much as 16 is a good indicator to show you that the magnification on these is half of this the 32, the 25, and the 40 refer to the distance across the lids in millimeters. These have 32 millimeter lids. These have 25. And of course, again, these have 40. Now, you may be thinking, okay, well, if this is your most powerful set, why do you even have the other two? Well, each size of binocular is going to have its own abilities and kind of be suited for its own thing. Uh, my 8x40s, for example, I tend to prefer to use these when hunting. Uh, they do give me a closer up image of something I'm looking at, but they also give me more of a wide scope of, of what's in the area. That way I can kind of look around a tree and maybe see a squirrel come into view. Uh, to me, it kind of feels like when you have peripheral vision. Uh, with my 1632s, I prefer, I prefer to have these with me at all times because they allow me to uh, point and spot stuff. So if I'm looking for something or if I'm looking for maybe some wood, I would rather have the motion of looking across and noticing uh, something farther away. With the 32 lids, it does give me a little bit bigger of a window as well. And finally, with the 1025s, they're really a good in-between. Sometimes with these, I get drawn into one spot with a powerful magnification uh, at closer ranges, uh, but at this, it's not so bad. Okay, so now I can talk about these all day and tell you why I like them, which one I would use for what. But what would be better than anything is if I let you see these for yourself. So what we're going to do is I have a leaf up here we're going to turn the camera around you're going to be able to see the leaf and then i'm going to apply each binocular to the lid so you can see what i see that leaf right there all right so first off we're going to start with our uh 10 25s uh this may take a little time to get this centered in okay ignoring some of the clarity because i can't really adjust for uh the lids uh there is the leaf there's sort of a general idea of what you can see around it. Not a whole lot. I can kind of get that other leaf in there. I'll be talking more about why I'm trying to get both of them in the same frame. Uh, but this is 1025, sort of how far away you can see. And again, there's the leaf by itself. Next, we'll be moving up to the 1632s. And here we go. Um, already, if you can tell, the uh, problem with 1632s is so zoomed in that you kind of get dis you kind of get disoriented and you can't find where you're at. Uh, again, here's the leaf, and right down here is the two leaves that we talked about earlier. Now, while I can't get both of these in the same shot, they're very close by. Uh, again, it's more like I was talking about with the peripheral vision. I can't really see everything that's going on. I can only kind of pinpoint and look really detailed at one object. Uh, lastly, we'll be going to the 840s, and I think you're going to see what I'm talking about finally about that peripheral vision. Uh, look at just how much you can really truly see in here. Actually, I can get both of these in the same in the same shot fairly well. I can see a little bit of detail. I can definitely uh, keep an eye and uh, see what else comes into the frame, but uh, it doesn't give me as much distance. But like I said with the 16, that wasn't really an advantage that we had. It's just kind of how the uh, binoculars worked. 
Well, now that we've done that, let's go back to the park and let's try these out a little bit more. All right, guys. So we're beginning our walk. We got our map. Um, I am set up at the uh, corner of the what we're calling the Ranger Station, which is where I have the arrow pointed to on my map. I'm going to walk to our first X. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my binoculars and I'm going to spot for the target. I know generally where the uh, spot should be. It's actually like directly in front of me. Uh, but either way, I'd still look through my binoculars. I would still confirm where it is and where it is on my map, and then I'm going to walk to it. All right. So I'm here at the first X. Um, now, the next one is going to be a little south of me. And I'm going to confirm it. Now, one of the things I'm confirming about this one is on the map, you can see it has sort of like five uh, appendages coming from it. It's ways it's two slides and a set of monkey bars. And then there's a staircase and a, uh, I guess a second staircase behind it. And with my binoculars, I can look in and see each of those features a lot more clear. Then I can look back at my map and double check that it's the right feature. I'm now going to walk straight toward it. Now this time to be difficult, I didn't go to the X on the map. I'm actually just on uh, this wall here of the uh, playground equipment. Uh, the next piece of playground equipment I think is right there. And I'm going to check and look and it looks about right. And I'm going to confirm it here. And that's the other thing. Like <coughs> you, can you can check the features to make sure they look right and uh, double check on your map. Uh, for this one, actually I can look at the features around it as well. Cause there should be a bench and there's a bench right there there should be a pole there's a pole right there and i could just use that to confirm more or less that feature if i can't tell just by looking at the feature but we're gonna walk over there now we're at the home stretch and again i see the little dirt pile with the uh two ride on animals i'm gonna take my binoculars i'm gonna confirm that there is a frog and a duck and i'll head there next and at this point i can literally see my camping spot now you can still use the binoculars to confirm which I will do. And I do confirm my camping spot. And that will okay, be so it. So we're going to start our second drill. Now this drill is just going to involve a compass and a pair of binoculars. This is the 1025s. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is my friend went off in a certain direction. I do know the last direction. And I want to look through my binoculars and uh, get a general idea of what I saw. I saw between those two trees. So I'm going to take the bearing of those two trees. So the setup I have here is I have my compass directly underneath my binoculars and I can actually go between them to find uh, my bearing and stuff. And I'm getting about a 50. So we're going to go ahead and walk it and we're going to see if we notice anything on the trail. Again, I'm going to check to see if I notice any sides or flags or anything like that. And I'm not seeing it. So we're going to go head over there and see what we can find. Okay, so we're here between, where, between the two trees. Now, if this was me being lost, I would be leaving flags or symbols or some way to tell direction. Uh, we're gonna pretend our friends just as smart and we're gonna say that we are going to skid and boom, I see a pile of rocks or I see a stick with an arrow pointing in the direction that we're heading. Um, the next thing we'll do is we'll take the bearing of it. Uh, I'm getting uh, like 60, 65, so we're gonna head on that line. And uh, when we get there, we'll look around again if we notice anything. Okay, boom. So we're here. Again, we're pretending, but we're saying that there's a pile of rocks or a symbol or something like here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to scan just about 360. Because this, I know, because this is an unnatural landmark. So I'm going to scan 360 to see if I see or notice. I don't. So I'm going to imagine still on the bearing to be with this rock. So I'm going to take it again. And this time, instead of taking the bearing, I'm going to orientate myself back to the 60, 65. And we'll keep walking from there. Probably going to go a couple yards, and then we'll check again. Okay, so we've came up to uh, basically the end of the road, because I don't think they've went up this hill. I have to decide between them going up that path, which is even steeper, or them going down this easier to walk path. I'm going to say they've probably went this way. But what I would do is I would make a marker here for myself so that I know to come back to this place if I don't see anything this way. I would then come back and check either up that way or up that way, depending on what I wanted to do. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand here where I'm going to put my marker. I'm going to then take a bearing of which way I'm going to be going, which is 320. And I'm going to walk that way. Again, every few yards I'm going to stop. 
and I'm going to scan and look for them. Now at this point, I've noticed them, and uh, at this point I could, you know, holler out. And in, in every few steps I could blow the whistle, if I had a whistle on me, I could shout, eat the of those lights so they can get their attention, they can get my attention. Uh, my friend is here now, and they appear to have hurt their foot. It appears she's hurt her foot, so we're going to try to get her back to the uh, original camp way over there. And uh, then we'll try to get her back to the uh, ranger station to help her out. Well, guys, it's again that time of the episode where uh, we got to make a really hard choice. And we also got to do our backpack uh, ceremony. If you got a better idea than the backpack ceremony, leave me a comment. I don't want to keep saying that. Um, so what we have to choose from uh, this week is either the 1632s and the uh, 1025s. Now... This is actually a lot harder than choosing between the two different compasses. Um, on one hand, the 1632s, they, they do have a pretty good balance of window and magnification, but not as good as balance as the 1025s. Uh, the 1025s can pretty much hold their own, uh, but these actually do provide me a little bit better picture. The handshake that you'll have naturally is a little bit worse with these. It's forgiving with this. And I can go back and forward with this all day. Um, but in the end of the day, the one thing this the 1025s cannot do that the 1632 uh, can is magnification. And it's because of that fact that I'm going to go with the 1632s. Um, my philosophy is going to be I'd rather have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. So because of that, we're going to be adding the 1632s to our growing compass collection. See, we already have the modern compass in there. We're just going to put them both in there. Um, one last word on the traditional style compass that we used in this episode. I was having a lot of problems with it um, during that uh, uh, drill. Uh, it was not wanting to give me an accurate reading uh, between the uh, the, the uh, peepo and when I tried to match it on the compass. So. I was having a lot of trouble with that. I would hate for somebody to buy that compass and have the same problem. So definitely may want to keep that in mind. Uh, but uh, the modern compass did that. It, it, it was a little bit harder, but it, I could actually do it with the modern compass. So I think that's more or less what I'm going to go with. And I'm actually kind of happy with the choice I made originally. Uh, next week, we'll be doing a craft that's going to help us keep pace. Uh, with this compass series a little bit more so you don't want to miss it and to make sure you don't miss it make sure you like comment subscribe to the channel backpack bushcraft if you want to keep up with me or know what i'm doing you can follow me on facebook twitter and instagram now at bpack bushcraft and as always you can check out the website where i post a blog every sunday night 10 p.m est that website is www.backpackbushcraft.com and until next time guys keep those fires burning put a log on for me